Hey everybody! First of all, I hope that everybody is safe and sound at home to, during these crazy times. But if you happen to be one of the people who still need to go out and work, my deepest respect. Please stay safe and, and healthy. I hope you have a good mask. Speaking of mask, we tried to buy one on my Amazon and it took two months to arrive. And, and then the thing is, you just, you can only use it for a certain amount of time and then you have to throw it away. So we were looking into alternatives and we found this uh, website, Copper 3D, which is a company who produces antimicrobial material for 3D printing. And you can read about it more in detail at copper3d.com. And they started this initiative called Hack the Pandemic uh, with, and one of their part of this project is to develop a 3D printed mask with the community. It's an open source project so everybody can uh, contribute. This is already the second version. Yeah, and uh, I decided to also try it maybe i can i can contribute to it so they suggest of course to use the material they're producing this antimicrobial um, 3d printing pla and which is let's go back here which is this one they have different types they have the antimicrobial flexi flexible material and yes so this is their standard um, antimicrobial uh, uh, material which is more expensive kind of makes sense um, but yeah I, I bought it I got it yesterday and I thought I'd give it a try so I will download the STL file let's bring it to my project folder So yes, so there is there are three files in here. One is the mask, the lock, and the filter. So if we go back to the side, so you have basically the mask. You have a filter or a part which holds the filter in place, and then in the lock. I think there's a better image here. Yes, so. You, you will need some more items so you need a strap and you need an actual filter which we we just ordered yesterday so but let's first uh, start with the mask I'm gonna start Pura so the idea of this mask is to uh, to be able to have a mask which you can reuse and you can exchange just a small filter rather than just throwing the whole mask you can then wash it and what's also possible with that, with that um, filament or with that uh, material is that you can heat it up and form it when it's when it's warm so it fits your face okay let's start let's put it in so I think see that they uh, because I opened this previously already and I see that they improved the design quite a lot it means you don't need to have any support which is really great so you can print it right away from how it is here they built they built basically an a support here What I don't like really is this 
I mean, for sure it works, but what I don't like is this bit here. It feels like it was just glued on or something. I would say let's just print that and see how it works. Oh yeah, first we need to, in order to print that, we need to first check uh, all the settings here. Quality, that should be fine. Um, it says I need to... Printing temperature should be uh, between 190 and 210. My printer always needs a bit more. Maybe I go with 200, somewhere in the middle. Plate build should be between 40 and 50, that's okay. Um, layer height should be larger than 0. Point, should be 0 0.1 or larger. So I use, because I use a nozzle size of 0 0.6 millimeter, you probably, most of the people are using 0 0.4. I use 0 0.6, it's not so much difference. It's just a bit faster. Um, retraction speed, I try to go a bit higher, should be fine. Then the travel speed should be between 40 and 50. So infill speed, I will take 50. The wall speed, I take 40. I don't need a support because they build it in a way that you don't need a support, which is great. So there is no overhang or the overhang is always in an angle, which allows to print without the support. It's all the only really overhangs here, but they built basically, they added a, a support here anyway. Okay, actually we can already start. Slice. Four hours. Yeah, so this is the the final printed mask, um, and then when you have the correct filter, this is just a cotton pad. You can put it in. Then you have these two other pieces. This is just to hold it in place, and then this is the lock. Probably need more two two layers of filter. Okay, now we heat it up with a hair dryer and fit it to the face. So at the moment it doesn't fit, right? Better? More? Yeah, more here. No, I think... It's 
It's better, no? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't close properly here. Yeah? That's perfect. You just have to adjust it here on the top. Cool. So what do you think? I, f I felt like that this here is not very comfortable. That's mm, no, mine is in my cheeks because maybe my cheeks are too chubby. Can you go on the side? Mm. But otherwise it works, no? And you need to fix the one inside that's holding the filter. Okay. Because when you breathe, can you hear that? Uh, I'm also not happy with... The design? No, well, on how it's made inside. That lock, mm -hmm. I think the previous one where you actually screw it on was better. This is too tight on my face. I think with for my face I need it a little bigger here. Because it's cutting here so much. And it hurts. Hmm. Okay. Is it because the thing is too tight? Mm, I think it needs to be tight anyway. Okay. Back to the drawing board. Yeah, you need to make it well, bigger. First I need to check if they have a new version. Yeah. But I think the idea that they have the the flexible filament here may be better. They have two pieces which you put it on, so it's more comfortable. And how are you gonna glue it there? Are you gonna glue it? How no, are you gonna no, do it? No, it's not the glue, it's like this rim here, it's gonna be smaller so it can form it better. Mm -hmm. But a slit where you can put it on. Yeah, but you think that that mask is way too small anyway, so you need to model it bigger. Mm -hmm. Because for you, you already have a very small face and it still looks so small on you. Yeah. Okay. Back to the drawing board.